Hello everyone, hope you're all well. So uh, in this video, I want to talk about the um, idea of walking away. Walking away. Um, now this is something that I think is very, very understated actually. Um, in the modern world. Um, probably always has been, to be fair. Um, what do I mean by this? Uh, I'm not talking necessarily about physically walking away from a situation. I'm talking metaphorically speaking, um, that sometimes, you know, you get to a situation where you're arguing with someone or debating with someone, and sometimes there's a blurry line between those two things. I'll come back to that, but I, I do believe that there are times that you can't say anymore and you can't, um, there's nothing productive coming from pushing a point further. Um, you know, broadly speaking, I think the bit's a good thing. I think that um, intelligent adults should have the ability to exchange ideas and have differences of opinion and do it in a mature and reasonable way. Um, of course, the reality doesn't always go that way. Sometimes, particularly when emotions are involved, um, you know, it goes with the gutter and it just becomes a mudslinging contest. Um. I could say I've risen above that, but I'd be lying. There's times, you know, I've lost my temper and I've um, I've said things that are probably less than diplomatic. I'm not going to say I'm sorry for them, but, you know, it's not my finest star, let's put it that way, because I stooped to their level. Um, but I think that, you know, this is something that um, actually people should consider a bit more. I mean, I think when you have a combination of emotive issues, uh, an obvious one right now is the war in Ukraine, uh, but this could extend to anything. When you have emotive issues, and then you have people with strong opinions, and you have egos, and you have all these things clashing, um, people don't want to back off because, A, they're genuinely angry, and they want to express that. B, I think there's this perception that, um, retreating is seen as almost cardis and i think that's a bit silly um i'm not talking about ukraine i'm just talking generally speaking um you know there's probably nothing more important than mental health nothing because it's a basis right if if you don't look after your mental health you can get into severe clinical depression it can lead to a whole range of other problems that are far more significant than temporary ego or whatever it is. So my point is sometimes you just have to put yourself first. And that might mean um, retreating for the sake of not losing your temper or not getting upset or not, not pushing something when you know that you're not going to be halfway. Right? Um... You know, I've uh, I've exchanged ideas, debates with, with uh, you know, I can't even count it every day, every day that I've been on social media, uh, I've been involved in some sort of debate or discussion. Sometimes it's, it's very small, sometimes it's longer, but uh, it is pretty much every day uh, for about 10 years or longer. I've been on Facebook since, well, at this point, it's going to be about 2005 or 2006. So about 15 years and pretty much that entire time I've been active on discussion groups and debate groups so literally there's barely a day goes by when I don't see a post and engage in some way now I'm not saying this is a mistake it's it's the world that we live in people are active on social media people engage in social media I'm not the only one um but honestly, there are times when pushing a point or um, having to always justify your position, um, it can get a bit draining. That's my own experience anyway. So as an example, you know, I will contribute to a discussion thread or someone contributes to mine, right? And then an hour later, I see a notification and maybe I'll respond to it, maybe I won't. It honestly depends what I'm feeling like, maybe I'm busy. Um, 
But if I'm being totally honest, just times I really can't be bothered because I know that the person who has replied, we don't see eye to eye, and it's not going to be a case of we'll agree to disagree. It will be a case of just point scoring. And I don't want to necessarily engage with that. But then it poses the question, well, why do we put ideas out there? Is it to, to preach to the converted people who will disagree with us? Because then it's an echo chamber or to try and change minds. And the thing about changing minds is you have to be pretty respectful. And sometimes that is hard when people are talking such nonsense. So I find that a lot of this is a real balancing act. Um, and, you know, maybe people think I'm talking nonsense. So they're not going to care whether I agree with them or not. And I don't, I don't want to be converted by them. So it's, you know, there's times when the, the differences are such that really it is just about ego. Or maybe um, calling out what you feel is just someone propagandizing for the wrong cause. Um, I mean, I must admit, I have a short fuse of Putin apologists living in the West because I think that they are taking the advantages of a free society to defend a dictator um, who's threatening the stability of Europe right now. So I must admit, I've... I'm unlikely to engage with a person like that in a very respectful way. Maybe I should, and maybe that's my fault, but it's just how I feel. Um, therefore, I'd rather avoid it altogether. Um, and, you know, there's another side. If I respect someone, if I like them in many ways, I have one particular area which I don't respect, I don't like. Um, I'll give an example. There's a woman I know, she's... She's quite an outspoken feminist. And, you know, she more often than not comes out with positions that are, to me, just divisive and, um, you know, objectionable. But I, I, I've i agreed with her in other areas. And I, um, you know, other than that, we get on well. So sometimes I will challenge her, but I, I'd much rather not get into a back and forth because... She she's pretty outspoken about it, and I'm I'm pretty outspoken about the double standards that that sort of feminism promotes. Rather than letting it get toxic, I'll pro you know I'll say my retort, and then that's it. I'll leave it. At that. I'm not going to go back and justify what I've already said. And just um, if I I gave that as an example because it's it just happened. She created this post. I may as well just um talk about it she um said basically women are being disproportionately affected by the war in ukraine um well she didn't really give any basis for that if she's talking about refugees that might be true of course she didn't negate to mention the fact that men are uniquely expected to fight uh all the ukrainian people are suffering and i think it's a bit um cynical to try and make it a gender thing um Men are uniquely expected to fight. Women are probably shouldering the burden in terms of uh, looking after children and so on. But stuff like that bothers me because it's, it's just divisive. Um, and I pointed this out to her. And, you know, now I'll, I'll have to wait for her notification that she's replied. And will I reply or not? I don't know. It's just an example. Um but honestly, I find it a bit draining sometimes. Another thing that's worth looking at is the fact that we, you know, we live in an era, social media is very, very influential, and we hear a lot about how bad social media is. I don't entirely agree with that. I don't think it's entirely bad. Um, I think it can be bad for your mental health, and I can think it can be toxic at times, depending how you go about it. On the other hand, it does keep you in touch with friends. It can help to spread awareness of things. It's I don't agree that it's entirely bad. I think social media gets a bit of a bad rap because of the behaviour of some of the people who engage in it. But I wouldn't say, and also because of the behaviour of some of these big companies, but I don't think that social media is necessarily a bad thing in and of itself. Um, another thing that we see very often nowadays, and it's, it's unfortunate, is you see these viral videos, and the internet is full of them. You know, YouTube is full of them. Um, and you see them on on Facebook as well, notifications. It's something like um, 
you know, such and such a person owns somebody else. Watch what happens in big block capitals. And there's so much clickbait out there that is preying on people's emotions and trying to suck them in. And then when you look at the content, it's actually not that dramatic or it's only showing one perspective. A good example of this will be some sort of exchange, some sort of argument or even physical confrontation. And what I find troubling is the number of people who just jump in and assume that they have the whole picture because they've seen part of it. This is very troubling because some of these videos are, you know, they get hundreds of thousands of views, very occasionally even billions of views. And people think that they know the whole story and they don't because they weren't there. Um, it, it just like people need to show a bit of modesty and realize we weren't there. We can't know everything. Um, so, so that bothers me because I think it's, um, it, it, it clouds people's judgment. Really, it does. Um, so, the, so there's a lot of ego out there and a lot of, I have to prove this, I have to prove that. I think we need to get away from this idea that walking away is, is hard. It's like, oh, we're not standing up for our conviction. You can't stand up for your conviction without always having to push it. That's something to consider. You can stand up for your conviction without always having to push it. Now, I think there's circumstances you have to, you have to speak out. Um, in life, you know, if you see someone vulnerable being abused and you walk by and do nothing, that probably is a bit cowardly. I mean, personally, I I would feel guilty as hell if I knew that I had an opportunity to do something and I didn't. That's just me. Um, because, you know, I could be all bravado and say, oh, I'd intervene. But the truth is we can never be 100% sure until it happens. I'd like to think I would. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I would like to think I would. And I believe I would. But I don't know. Um, but that's more a physical thing. In terms of debate, you know, again, it's like point scoring. People are like such and such a person, usually it's referring to public figures, owns somebody else. This is an Americanization I really don't like because it's childish. It's, it's like a popularity contest. Surely what matters is the content of an argument rather than the delivery. But of course, that's maybe naive because the delivery, that's what gets attention. So, you know, if you have people debating, let's say it's some sort of um, debate format, and you have an audience that's biased to one person over the other, of course they're going to cheer every time their person makes any point. And then that would be construed as this person owns that person. And you see it all over YouTube in big block capitals. Uh, person A owns person B. No, it's just because the person posting the video agrees with that argument. And what I've always tried to do in my videos, maybe I haven't always succeeded in this regard, and it's something that I'm going to perhaps edit or clean up. You know, um, I've always tried to be, but I know how this works. I want people to watch my videos, so I try to make them interesting, but I also try not to have clickbait. So, what whatever the title is in my videos is what i talk about i've always tried very hard in that regard uh, but you do get videos that are um, big block capitals and it's it's a distortion of what it's really about um anyway i'm going to wrap this up but you know i think we would all benefit from sometimes agreeing to just disagree and accepting that people have a different way of looking at the world and we have to have the modesty to accept that we don't know everything and we can't just get everyone around our way of thinking. Um, and sometimes we just have to be comfortable knowing that we are comfortable in our own convictions rather than having to prove it to other people. Um, of course, I, I think something that isn't admirable would be if someone pretends to have strong views on something 
But then when it comes to, um, you know, they're, they're asked about it, they put on a big facade. Like, basically, they say one thing to one person and one thing to someone else just for convenience or just because it's comfortable to always agree with people. I actually think that would be burdensome. Burden, burdensome, yeah. It's, it's, you know, if you're always agreeing just to please people, what conviction do you have? So, for me... You know, I'm not going to be in a social situation like a party or go into a pub or something and go up and ask someone some loaded question about ideology. Rather, my approach is if they ask me, I'm not going to lie. Or if they say something really outrageous, I probably would challenge them. But I honestly, given a choice, I'd rather not. I'd rather not deliberately get into situations that are I feel are not going to develop in a practical way, in a reasonable way. And, you know, people would say, well, people should always have civil debate. That's a nice idea, but it's not really realistic because human emotions do inevitably get involved. And, you know, when you're talking about issues like life and death, national security, these emot emotive issues, um, people, you know, will will find it hard to keep a distance and be robotic and not have uh, strong sentiments about that. So anyway, I'll wrap this up. Um, let me know your thoughts. I honestly think sometimes, by the way, that applies to this channel as well, because I've had people who have made a comment disagreeing with me. And, you know, I've let them make that comment and sometimes I've replied to it. But I, I think some of my critics expect me to get into a big, long back and forth. And if you're one of those people, uh, don't waste your time because I'm not going to. Okay. Um, I leave the comment section open because I'm not a dictator. I want people to be able to dissent from my point of view and to be able to criticize me and say that I'm wrong and all the rest of it. But um, that doesn't mean I'm obliged to get into a big lengthy back and forth. Um, that's how I've always approached it. And I think, to be fair, that's how most creators approach it. But honestly, mental health is more important than anything. It really is. And it's not a selfish thing because if you don't look after your own mental health, it's going to affect how you uh, treat other people anyway. So having healthy, uh, having a healthy balance and looking after ourselves is actually utilitarian because it helps you, but it helps other people as well. Um, otherwise, you're going to be a very cranky, defensive sort of person. Anyway, uh, and one final point, I'll just close with this. There are certain backgrounds and professions where you have to debate and you have to publicly state your views. The obvious one is politicians. Now, politicians, it's part of their job to debate, to exchange ideas, to put forward their own ideas. That's their job. But I imagine even politicians will want to shut off sometimes. I mean, you know, if you have an MP who's political 24 hours a day, I'm sure it will drive their husband or their wife crazy. So um, I think even people whose job it is to be engaged in these things, journalists as well to an extent, political activists, they must have times when they need to shut off because otherwise it'll just, I think that can be unhealthy to obsess about something. I think everyone, everyone, if they can, need to find an avenue to shut off and to, to just get away from it sometimes. I mean, for me, I'm following this Ukraine thing very closely, but um, I'm also, you know, I'm watching Big Bang Theory these days. It's pure escapism, because if I was constantly watching the news, as interested as I am, it would be, it would be very depressing. And then being depressed wouldn't help the people of Ukraine, so... That's that's the way to look at. Right, let me know your thoughts um, about walking away, about standing up for conviction and the issues around this. Thank you.